Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China, a segment that gives you a taste of the future before it actually happens. I'm going to talk about emerging technologies that have life-changing potential and assess their ability to influence our life in the near future. In the sci-fi movie Fantastic Voyage, a team of scientists is shrunk down to microscopic size and injected into a human body to repair a damaged blood vessel. They were able to navigate through the body and find the source of the disease, allowing them to develop a cure to save the patient, a diplomat's life. This movie of 1966 has since become all-time classic and popularized the idea of shrinking humans and traveling inside human body. Well, today's topic, as you can guess, is about shrinking human. A team of scientists have successfully shrunk themselves and disappeared. Nobody has seen them since. Okay, just kidding. We are actually going to talk about traveling inside a human body and curing disease. It's no less exciting than drinking humans, though. In 1959, a few years before the release of Fantastic Voyage, the Nobel Prize laureate scientist Richard Feynman has already charted a path on how to get inside the human body. He first proposed the idea of nanotechnology. He believes that in the future, nanobots may act as miniature surgeons that can accurately diagnose and treat diseases. The future is now. Over the last few years, a dozen or so research teams in China have developed varying types of nanobots to work in diverse circumstances for a variety of tasks. Depending on the jobs at hand, some of these nanobots are made of DNA molecules and others borrow material from microorganisms. Our star today are a case on point. Researchers from the Chinese Academy of Science in Shenzhen have built a hybrid nanobot with parts from yeast and microphage. It's called Twin Bioengine Yeast Nanobot, or TBY Nanobot for short. Being a chimera of yeast and macrophage gives it some unique abilities. During an animal experiment, the nanobot was fed to a mouse and traveled as a yeast cell down to its gut. After reaching its checkpoints or transfer station, the bot was switched to the macrophage mode and entered the bloodstream through lymph node to complete the delivery. Finally, it will reach the destination, the site of inflammation. What's great about this innovation is that it allows the robot to deliver drugs right into the spot where they are needed the most, inside the body. It's protected against digestive juices so it can get there in one piece. The nanobot has two engines to propel itself into the human body, one from the east and the other from macrophage. Yeast cells move by using enzymes to break down glucose and other molecules in the environment so it doesn't need to carry any other energy source. The yeast can navigate through complex barriers inside our body, or move towards the direction where the glucose concentration continuously increases, since intestinal mucus acts as a barrier to absorb glucose into the bloodstream, the glucose molecules are more concentrated in the mucus layer, resulting in a higher gradient. Consequently, the nanobots in the yeast mode move towards the glucose gradient to penetrate the intestine mucus barrier and then crush the layers of cells that lines the intestine. That's the furthest the yeast mode can go. Yeast, after all, are foreign to our body. When they reached the checkpoints in the gut, they will be stopped by the payer's patches. There are groups of immune cells located in the small intestine. These cells are responsible for recognizing and responding to any antigens that enters the body through the gastrointestinal tract, allowing the immune system to respond quickly and appropriately. Obviously, yeast are perceived by the payer's patches as aliens that need to be kept out. For a chimera nanobot, that's where the macrophages takes over. Macrophages are insiders of the immune system. The guards at the checkpoint seize macrophages as their own and transfer them into lymph nodes, which is part of the immune system. From there, it enters the bloodstream and swims to the inflamed site of the gut. This experiment's results were very encouraging. The drug accumulation at disease sites were increased by a thousand times. This significantly reduced inflammation in colon and improved the condition of gastric ulcers in mouse. 
after the nanobots reach their destination and deliver the drug, they start to degrade. And this ensures the safety of this therapy method, as none of the bot's nanoparticles will stay in the body for long and cause unwanted side effects. But it also comes at a downside. Since they are made from biodegradable materials, the nanobots may not last long enough in the body to sustain drug delivery over a long period of time. There are also opportunities for improvement in other areas. For example, due to nanobot small size, there is a risk that some particles might get trapped inside organs or tissues that might lead to adverse side effects if left untreated. To address these limitations, our scientists from Shenzhen are looking for ways of developing more robust nanobots. So, how good is it according to the standard threshold rating? Well, let's move on to the threshold rating system. Readiness, novelty, and potential impact or rippleness. As we mentioned before, the readiness category refer to the maturity of a technology. From lab demonstration 1 to mass production 5, the novelty score refers to how new the innovation is. 1 means a small differentiation to existing technology, and 5 means that the innovation fulfills a new function. Finally, the ripple scale is our opinion of a technology's potential for life-changing impact, and how widely it can be applied elsewhere. How does this TBY nanobot stack up? Although this nanobot is just a proof or concept, the researchers do have the big picture in mind. They suggested using a combination of 3D printing and microfluidic techniques for the large-scale production, which can be used in clinical settings. They also believe that these nanobots could potentially be produced on demand, just like with the conventional robots, depending on the type of drug delivery or therapy required, you can program the nanobot with specific instructions. Rosy picture aside, there's still a lot of work to be done before the nanobot can really make a difference to our lives. For now, it's a two in readiness category, but it certainly hit the mark in novelty category. The world hasn't seen anything like this, a hybrid of yeast and macrophage, and uses a relay of two distinct motions to cross immunity barriers. We put it at a 4 on novelty scale. Finally, the potential influence. This technology could be used to deliver medicine or therapies directly to specific sites into the body with greater accuracy than traditional methods. And more importantly, the idea of building hybrid nanobots to cross multiple barriers in human body could possibly inspire other researchers tasked with finding better ways of medicine delivery. The TBY nanobot definitely provides a new angle to attack the problem. Therefore, it is a 4 in this last dimension. And with that, it reaches the threshold to real-world influence. The impact here is not only a reduction of required dosage, but also a reduction of drug-induced side effects. What other users can you think of a technology like this? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you. Bye.